Hi everyone, this is Ting Goose bringing you that long promised CO2 review video uh, that I've been talking about when I do my weekly updates. So those of you who have watched my channel know that I've dabbled with a few different CO2 setups on some of my tanks. Uh, I actually don't run CO2 on all of them. And I figured I'd give you a review of my experience so far with the different setups that I've done. Uh, and kind of talk about the pros and cons of each and maybe the pros and cons of just uh, CO2 in a planted tank. Do you need it? Do you not need it? And my overall opinion on that. So I'm going to start with the setup I started out with, which was the DIY setup. Uh, a very inexpensive kit you can get online. If you want to see more about this uh, setup, I have a couple videos I'll link below that I've already done on it in more detail. But DIY setup where you're making your own mixture of uh, reactionary agents for uh, the CO2 generation, citric acid and baking soda. And I had to mix that about every, I don't know, 10 days or so of the 75 gallon. And I had a really good experience with it and I personally didn't feel that much trouble. The only thing I would say about that setup uh, is it does the kit you buy, which is like 18 bucks online comes with this really cheap uh, plastic uh, needle valve for controlling CO2 flow. Uh, I quickly found that this was pretty insufficient, hard to dial in, and eventually broke and upgraded to a better needle valve. Uh, just an easy to install brass fitting that was just fine. Uh, for all my setups, I do not run a solenoid, uh, I just turn them on and off uh, in the morning and night. Um, I check my tanks every morning anyways. I check them before I go to bed at night. So it really has not been that difficult for me to uh, monitor the CO2 flow. And I actually like doing that. If I'm adding like CO2 to the tank, uh, where my most important thing in the tank is always the fish. When I buy my tanks, I'm buying them, I'm setting them up for the fish first that I want. And then I'm going to look at you know the planning, the aquascape I'm going to do to accompany those fish. But I'm primarily concerned about the fish. So if I'm going to do something like CO2, I'm a little bit of a control freak that way. I actually like to make sure I'm turning it on, checking the dosage in the morning, checking it at night before I turn it off uh, with the tanks. But those DIY or those solenoid kits, uh, they're great for an automated solution. I think a lot of people have great success with them, so I'm not going to put them down. Uh, they can be a little pricey and all things we have to do, but they're um, pretty handy, especially if you have a lot of tanks that you're running CO2 on. Um, so that was a DIY setup. I then uh, wanted to dabble with the pressurized CO2. So I started out actually setting this up on the 40 gallon. Uh, I since took it off the 40 gallons, I thought I didn't need it. But I bought that uh, Blue Vowel 88 gram kit um, and convert, you know, it comes with the 188 gram cartridge, which I used. Uh, but then I quickly converted it to a paintball setup. So I'm going to take the camera and I want to show you a little more detailed setup of the paintball CO2 setup and what I purchased to uh, adapt to the Fluval kit. Here is the Blue Vowel 88 gram setup I talked about. Pretty straightforward kit, uh, has the adapter for the 88 gram CO2 cartridges, uh, pressure gauge, and this needle valve for dialing in your flow rate. Um, talking about those other two setups I had, that plastic one definitely had the most challenge dialing in my flow rate each day. The brass one was good, um, didn't wasn't much of a challenge to dial that in. Uh, this one's been great for me, at least in my experience. I come down in the morning and it's really straightforward to dial this in. It's a small turn uh, to get my flow rate correct and I haven't had any troubles with this since I've been running it. I've been running this now for, uh, gosh, I want to say about nine months, I feel like, maybe just a little bit under that. Uh, in terms of the CO2 that I use, um, you can see I don't have the 88 gram kit. I went out and bought uh, this Hydra Aquatic C20 ounce tank CO2 adapter that will fit this kit. Uh, it's about $14 online and that enables you to then uh, use a 20 ounce CO2 tank that I got from a paintball supply store. Um, it's a really much more inexpensive option versus buying those disposable 88 gram cartridges. Uh, this way I pay $3 to refill this. This lasts me uh, three to four weeks uh, for what I'm doing 
in my CO2 dosing right now, especially if I remember to turn it uh, on and off at a really good hour uh, before bed. And overall, there might be some opportunities down the road. I had to search all the different paintball supply stores in my local community. I only found one that was actually still doing CO2 tank setups uh, since the sport really doesn't use CO2 any longer. Uh, luckily, the store said they have a good supply of people coming in to buy CO2 refills for uh, at home um, keg setups and for planted tanks, believe it or not. So hopefully they'll continue to carry that and I continue to uh, use that because $3 every three to four weeks is actually less expensive than the DIY mixture that I was using. Uh, so overall cost effective for me, easier to dial in, I feel uh, comfortable with this system. I know not uh, fully automated. I don't know if I ever go fully automated with this solenoid. Uh, I actually don't mind dialing this in each morning. I, like I said, I don't run too many tanks. It would be a little different story if I had a giant fish room with, you know, eight to a dozen tanks and I was running CO2 on uh, several of them, then I'd probably do something a little more automated. But for me, this is really easy to manage and take care of. And I've had um, really great experience uh, with the growth. So I want to kind of step back and kind of give you my um, opinion on CO2 and the hobby in general. Okay, so conclusions. Um, some of you have been asking me, do I need CO2 in my planet tank? Uh, and the answer to that, I want to say is it depends. Um, as you can see, I keep a lot of plants that require you know, low to medium light. Um, I think it depends on what you're planning to choose for your tanks. For me and how my thought process works, I actually always start with the fish I'm looking to keep um, and then I build the aquascape around that for what's going to be enjoyable for me and what's going to work with the inhabitants of the tank. Uh, I've chosen a lot of plants that actually are more aquatic. I mean, you look at Jungle Val and these swords, these are aquatic plants, they grow underwater just fine and you don't really need CO2 to grow those. However, CO2 can help them grow at a better pace, look a little more full, get some of those little more full growth in your tanks. I, like I said, I actually had CO2 on both the 40 gallon and the 75 gallon. Uh, I took it off the 40 gallon because I had a couple uh, things get out of balance within that tank and then we lost uh, probably one more favorite fish we had in the house uh, and from that tank. And I really decided to kind of pause on that one, dial it back in, get it to where I was happy with uh, the water parameters, and then we'll think about in the future. And what's happened with that tank since then, I've changed out a few plants that are more low light uh, requirements, and it's running great. So I don't think there's actually a plan to go back and add CO2 at this time. We're so happy with how that one's looking and how uh, all the fish are, um, are doing and how the plants are growing. I don't think I want to do it. Um, we'll see, but I think for now I'm going to leave that one be. The 15 gallon quarantine, the all low light plants, grows really great. And, you know, with both those tanks, am I going to get explosive growth? No, uh, but I'm going to get, you know, moderate to good growth, especially with some of the uh, things I dose. And I'll do a dosing video as well in terms of what I've dosed for the plants. Uh, but like I said, for me, the thought process always starts with what are the fish and inhabitants I'm looking to keep? what's the aquascape I want to do around that, and what are the requirements to the aquascape. And then I start asking myself, well, some things I want to get, would I need CO2 for that? If I do need CO2, maybe I'll second think one of those plants. If it's one plant I want to get and add to the tank, and that one plant's going to require CO2, is it really worth it at that point? And so I would maybe take a step back and look at, well, what are the other plants that are comparable or that might give some of the same effects? Now, if you're wanting a dwarf baby to your carpet or a Monte Carlo carpet or something like that in your tank, you're going to need CO2. You want to need CO2, you want to need more high intensity light, you want to be a little more strict on your parameters in terms of dosing. Uh, so those things absolutely going to need CO2. There are a lot of great channels out there who are going to show you those high tech setups. Um, I might link a couple down in the description to my favorite channels to go watch when I want to learn more about some of those high tech setups. However, as a more casual hobbyist, I think you can have a lot of success with a more basic setup like I have on some of these tanks or even with no CO2 at all. It really depends on what you're looking to get out of the hobby. Um, and if that's what you're looking for, there's absolutely great setup videos for you out there. So I know it's not a 
specific answer one way or another, but to those people out there looking to do a planted tank, I think you can get a beautiful planted tank. Uh, you've seen some of my other ones, and there are so many varieties of plants out there that you can get that are gonna work in your tank, that are gonna work for your fish, that don't even require CO2. They're gonna grow just fine as long as you consider things like the substrate, the light that you use, the um, some of the dosing. You, you will have to get some sort of like root tabs and maybe do some basic dosing to help support them. But really, you're gonna have some uh, nice experience um, with those plants and I think on in the future I want to do a video on some of those um, low light requirement plants that are more uh, straightforward and easy to take care of that can work in your, in your tank so uh, that's all for now I hope uh, you found this video helpful found informative like subscribe uh, please leave any questions comments down below uh, if I missed anything you want me to cover I'll try to do maybe a quick recap of that question. So please ask any questions down below. Maybe I'll do a quick 30 second, you know, um, revisit video just to kind of cover that. So hope you all have a great week. Thank you for watching and that's all for now guys.